The barcode. And so, what do we do if we happen to see humans? Hide from them, right? And what if you've got nowhere to hide? Then we turn ourselves into screws. That's correct. Where could it be? Uh, where on earth could I have put it? Oh, I'm such a scatterbrain. Ah, it's Professor Eugenius. There's no need to hide from him. He's our friend. Where has it gone? Ah, uh, did you lose something again, Professor? Yeah, how did you guess? It's just awful. Yesterday I started testing a new iron, and today, ah, uh, it's totally disappeared into thin air. Where could you have put that thing? Um, I've got it down to two places. It could be in the warehouse or mm, not in the warehouse. Yeah, that information will help us find it. Or not help us find it. <laughs> <laughs> Class, follow me to the warehouse. If we have to look inside each one of them, it'll take us two days. Maybe we'll get lucky. Let's look in this one. No. Inside there is a fan. A fan? Wow, it's a fan. Hmm. And what's inside this one? Uh, a mixer. Yeah, amazing. And what's in this box? An electric kettle. Made in Germany, by the way. He's right. There is a kettle in there. Professor, is this some trick? I don't get it. Francis, how do you do it? It's got to be magic. What else? Here's how I think he's doing it. I think the professor has glasses made to see through the boxes. <laughs> of course not. I only know how to read the barcode that you can see on each of those boxes. Oh, that. Exactly. If you look at the printing on packages and boxes, you will often find a symbol with a lot of black lines and numbers. These symbols are called barcodes. Each barcode has all sorts of information. What the item is, what country it came from, and even in which factory it was made. With the help of a special reading device, a scanner, it's possible to read all the information the barcode holds. It really is an excellent system for stores to know what they've got. You don't even need a scanner to do it? I can figure out barcodes without one. I'll teach you if you want. Class. Let's see. We're looking for a box with an iron. There. Well, bring in the professor. Today on almost everything that is sold, there is some kind of mark. For instance, this kind of mark is called a barcode. And this one, a QR code. These marks help us find out a lot of information. Suppose you walk by a building and see a QR code on it. Just point the camera on your mobile phone at it, and information about who built it and when it was built will appear on the screen. Isn't that great? It's a shame not every phone can do this yet. And that's not all. There are also marks that work without pictures. There are electronic chips that can hold information. These chips can be put inside of ID cards or travel passes, and all you need to do is press the card near a reader so it can check if you're allowed to go on through. Ah, uh, you just made my day. You found it so quickly. What would I do without you? Huh? Is something wrong? This is not an iron. Whose sandwich is that? Mine. Yesterday I wanted to put it into the fridge, only I guess I put it into my... Oh, I just get distracted so easily. Look, we need to think this through logically. If you went and placed your sandwich into the box where the iron should have gone, then you must have put your iron... In, in the, the refrigerator. refrigerator! Oh, here you are. Here you are, my new iron. Oh, I looked everywhere for you. Thank you, my friends, once again. There's no need to thank us at all. You're always there when we need help. You've even let us open our own school here in your laboratory. And we don't have to hide or 
ourselves. Yeah, that's because you're so kind and you love Fixies. The Crowbar. Everything's fine here, too. I wish something would break for a change. It's already been a week and nothing's broken in here. Stop worrying. Everything breaks at some point. Well, nothing seems to ever break inside of this house. That's because we take such good care of it. No, Masya, it's boring with no real work to do. We should move somewhere else. When Fixies graduate from school, they must choose the place where they want to work. Some will work at factories, and some on ships, and some in theaters, and some in hospitals, too. Fixies are needed everywhere. Now, Fixie families with children like to choose places that are a bit quieter. Usually, they'll settle inside of people's houses. It's not too noisy there, like in a factory, but there's still plenty of work to do. They need to check on appliances like computers, vacuum cleaners, telephones, irons, and washing machines. And Fixies always try their best. They just love being busy with work. And so, if there's nothing broken in the house, Fixie families will move to a new place where there's much more work to be done. Nolik, did you hear that? Uh, I don't want to move anywhere. But think about the kids, dear. They've got their school and friends here. Do you like this friend of theirs? A human kid playing with Fixie kids. You know as well as I that it's just not right. <sighs> All right, then. If nothing's broken down before the end of the day, that's all. We gotta move. Oh, no, I can't. Tom Thomas comes home the day after tomorrow, and we'd be gone by then. Pull yourself together. And I won't see him anymore at all? No, like, I have an idea. What, what idea? If something happens to break down before the end of the day, then we're not moving. But what if nothing breaks? Calm down. We're gonna make sure of it. Suka, you're a genius. But how can we make sure of it? We're going to use a crowbar. A crowbar is powerful and simple. It's nothing more than a heavy metal bar with either sharp or flat ends. It can be very helpful for breaking through concrete or ice. It can also be used as a lever to root out a tree stump or move a boulder. If one end of the bar has a claw cut into it, then it's good for pulling out nails. Yes, sometimes the simplest tools are the most powerful ones. Do we have that tool? We've got our Pack-A-Mat. And it's got everything. No, you're not. N now I'm confused. First off, whatever you break's gotta look like it broke all by itself. Oh, I gotcha. And second, you gotta break it in some way that can be fixed later. Did someone say something needs fixing? <clears throat> or am I hearing things? Papas, we just found out that the uh, television's broken down. Are you sure? Yeah. And one of the keys on the keyboard is stuck. For real? For real. And the clock's not running either. Oh, ho! Masya, our life is getting back on the right track. Should we fix them? Yeah, what else? We are the Fixies. We live to keep on working, and work for us is fun. So we'll just keep on working, because our work's never done. And deep inside of gadgets, if you look when it's dark, you might just see us face around like multicolored sparks. One, two, three. Tenis. Inside will be... Tenis. To fix what's wrong, to it run strong. One, two, three, Tenish. inside will be Tenish. all day and night. Tenish. We fix things.
That's right. Tibby! Oh, that was a lot to do. You'd almost think that somebody broke it on purpose. Well, we didn't do it. It broke by itself. Yeah, this apartment still needs a lot of work. We shouldn't move anywhere. I like it here. So do I. It's the best. See, we don't need to go anywhere. Friction. Oh, Tom Thomas, that door of yours squeaks terribly. Yeah, and it's not easy to open either. Well, that's because the hinges are rubbing. That's why your door is not working right. How can I fix it? Just reduce the amount of friction. How? With some oil on the hinges. I can do it for you, because I've got a pack-a-mat. All right. Simka, can I help you? Sure you can. Wear the pack-a-mat, all right? Friction is the force that tries to stop something from sliding or rubbing smoothly against something else. Rubbing can make things wear out quickly if there's a lot of friction. If you want less friction, you need to put something on the parts that rub against each other, like oil. There are special kinds of grease used to keep clocks and wheels turning smoothly. And for skis, a special kind of wax can be used to make them go even faster. That's it. Now the top hinge. It's all done. Go ahead and check how it's working. It's not squeaking. I told you. You guys are the best. I gotta go. Go where? I'm gonna go sledding. Maybe you'll take me with you? Uh, sorry, Nolik. You don't have a sled to ride on. I'll see you later. Simka, should I grease the saucer? What for? It'll slide down the hill just the way it is. Ah, okay then. <gasps> um, wait here for me, Nolik. I'll be back real soon with a surprise for you. Yeah, oil oh, slippery. I know what I'll do. Hmm. Wow! Talk about no friction. Are you all right? Just stay where you are. I'll be right there. Papus! Papus! Help us, please! Who called for me? Help is on the way! Hey, what are you up to? Grandpa, stay away from here! You'll fall over! Hey? What did you say? Stay where you are! Uh, oh, uh. What happened here? I poured some oil on the table. Why'd you do that? To reduce friction. That's brilliant. Nobody move. I know exactly what to do. What was the problem you had with the friction? I want to see all of this oil gone in five minutes. Huh. Engineers are in a constant battle with the force of friction. They want less friction so that cars will run faster and their parts will wear out less quickly. But just imagine what the world would be like if all of a sudden there was simply no friction at all. Everything would start slipping out of our hands and falling off the table. Knots would untie themselves, and that's not the half of it. Cars wouldn't be able to run without friction either. Wheels would spin around and around in one place, unable to grab onto the road. We wouldn't even be able to walk. Because when we walk, we move forward by pushing off the ground with our feet. And how can we do that without friction? We can't. So now I think you can see why it's not so bad to have a little bit of friction in our lives. Whew! We cleaned it. But it's still so stinky. <gasps> no, like I completely forgot. I promised you a surprise. Look! 
What is it? I made you your very own saucer for sledding. Oh, that's great! Only, what good is this thing without snow? Nolik, hey! Look what I've got for you! Snow? Yeah. Is it real snow? Really? Yep. Now you've got your very own hill to sled on. This is great! What an awesome surprise! And you don't need oil to make it go quickly. <laughs> Yeehaw! The Stain. <laughs> What's going on? If you really want to watch TV, then you gotta turn it on first. I'm not watching it, I'm looking at my reflection. I'm working on a self-portrait. And which shelf will you be painting in your shelf-portrait? <laughs> it's not a shelf-portrait, it's called a self-portrait. It's when an artist draws or paints a picture of himself. Of himself? Ha! You think you've got muscles like the superhero I see here on this paper? How can I see exactly what my muscles look like? And anyway, let the artist do his work. Tom Thomas, your shirt! There's a spot! <gasps> oh no! Wipe it off, quickly! It's even worse, so now what? Uh, what we really need is Masia. Ordinary dirt can be cleaned off with a brush or washed off with water. But there are stains that are not that easy to get rid of. Stains from fruit need to be soaked in hot water first. Blood stains, on the other hand, should never be washed in hot water. You can clean stains from paint or rust as well. Only for those, you'll need to use a special stain remover. But stain removers should only be used with the help of a parent or other adult that knows how to use them safely. Hey, I know a great way to do it! What do you use to get rid of pencil marks? An eraser. Only this shirt isn't paper. And so what? Let's try it. What's the harm? Now I've got three colors to get off. New idea! We should paint over it with this correction pen. With whiteout? Yeah! That was a bad idea. Now I got it. You have to use some water. The wash should be better, don't you think? No, you can't wash whites with colors. And you've got a white shirt with colors all over it. Then how about if we try some more water? How much more can you use? Uh, any more ideas? You know what? It's possible we did something wrong. <laughs> Everything you did was wrong. You should have used a spot remover to clean off that stain. A spot remover? No way! Oh, take a look at it, Simka. I think it's marvelous. They painted that white shirt so nicely. Tula is Simka's best friend. She's very tall, almost as tall as Papus. Yeah, she's the tallest one in her class. And she's strong, too. Tula loves to laugh, and she does it louder than everybody. That's just the way she is, cheerful and kind, ready to help anyone who needs it, and making sure her friends are getting along. Of course, I don't like that she treats me like a baby, especially since she's the one that's a scaredy cat. She can even get scared of a cute little spider. And she believes in all sorts of silly superstitions and horoscopes. Tula will believe anything you tell her, which is really great because it makes it so easy to play tricks on her. But she takes it all in good fun. That's because she's Tula. It was on purpose, wasn't it? <laughs> well, yeah. Tom Thomas, no! Your mom will punish you for just one of them. And now you're gonna make more stains? Don't worry, Nolik. I forgot that this is an old shirt and I'm allowed to get it all dirty if I want. And I tried so hard to clean it. Put another spot there. And over here. One in the middle. And a line over there. Splendid! That looks great! And how about down there? Wow! It's like fireworks! Splendid! There's a name for this style of 
with painting, and properly speaking, it's an abstract painting. They have lots of lines and spots, and everyone sees whatever they want in them. Yeah, look! A golden ball by the river! And there's Tom Thomas with an F on his report card! <laughs> <laughs> Tom Thomas, what did you do to your room? And your shirt. You know what they call it? It's, uh, abstract art. Hmm, there's something good in it. I like it. Abstract art. Isn't it great? Ah, my little artist. The catapult. here. There's no way these toy soldiers could have shot it themselves. Now that was a good shot. It wasn't real long and not high either. And off target. It was pretty awful. It was good, but awful. I got it. So what do we do? We need to raise it up a little higher. Hey, fire, Nolik! Why in the world would you shoot at a fixie? Fixies? They're supposed to be in school right now. Actually, I'm on my way to school. How about you, Fire? Why aren't you in class? Because there it's totally boring. But here, look at what a cool shooter we found. Ha! <laughs> what did you call it? You've got no idea what this is. It's called a catapult, guys. A cat with gold eyes? <laughs> it isn't a cat with gold eyes. It's a catapult, guys. <laughs> Catapults are ancient propulsion machines. They were used to shoot stones, heavy arrows, or barrels with burning tar. The main part of the catapult is a special piece of rope. It is twisted very, very tightly like a spring. The rope is then wrapped around a big spoon. And then, if you pull the spoon back, put a stone in it, and let it go, the catapult fires a shot. Ooh, and the stone flies far, far away. Uh-huh. All right, so here we go. Ha! Ugh, came up short. What do you mean short? What are you aiming at? You'll see. The spoon needs to go further back. Just a little. Guys, you're gonna break the glass. <laughs> no, like, now push. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, right on target. Now let's fly out into space. Wait, what space? What kind of flying? Who's gonna fly? I'm gonna fly! Ha-ha! <laughs> right out the window! Right up to the moon! First fixin' onto the world, Nolik! Are you ready for your flight into space? Yes, sir! Nolik, get out of the spoon now! I'll be the first fixie on the moon! Yeah! Nolik, enough of this! What kind of joke is this? It's not a joke at all! He's gonna fly into space! And how come it's not you? Because he's lighter! Hold on! Humans didn't go straight into space themselves. They sent dogs out there first. Nah, Chusaka's not gonna fit in here. Simka, why don't you go and let us finish? Fine, I will go. But only after Nolik finds himself a helmet. Hmm, you're right about that. I'll go find a helmet. The catapult was invented in ancient times. But people still use them today. Only now, instead of launching stones, catapults are used to launch jet airplanes. You see, the runway on an aircraft carrier is quite short, so catapults are used to help the planes move fast enough to take off. Catapults can also be used to save the life of a pilot. When an airplane has an accident, a catapult activates in the cabin. The pilot is shot into the sky and comes back to the ground with a parachute. A plain old slingshot is also a kind of catapult. It's just a very little one. But be careful with this toy. It can be dangerous to others and to you, too. As for us fixies, the only time that we use catapults is on a peaceful mission. Habus, hurry! Our Nolik's getting shot to the moon with a catapult! What? And if I meet new fixies up there, what should I say to them? Hi there. 
And you can ask them to launch you back. So, let's do it! Fire! Launch it! Stop! Don't! Simka! Nolik! I'm not getting out! Just a bit short. It's not our fault. You're just heavier than Nolik, and that's why you came up short. Papus, maybe we can try one more time. What? <sighs> the team. The first period is almost over. Tom Thomas' team is leading to nothing. There's no getting around the difference in class. Simka, pass it to me! <laughs> Simka, over here! <laughs> Goal! Three nothing. And that's the end of the period. Time for the teams to take a break. This isn't a fair game. There's six of these guys and only two of us. Uh. Go ahead and call your classmates. I'll still outscore you. You sure about that? Uh-huh. Well, Tom Thomas, you asked for it. Young Fixies take classes and study just like human kids. But Fixie schools are quite a bit different than schools for people. To begin with, there are no more than ten students in a room. In Simka's class, for instance, there are six, and the children don't study in one place. On one day, the lesson could be inside a refrigerator, the next day in a computer, and the day after that in a vacuum cleaner. This is the best way for Fixies to learn all about them and put their new knowledge to the test. But the most important thing is that they have to learn to work as a team and help each other. Stronger Fixies helping weaker ones, and older Fixies helping younger ones. This is a must for Fixies, because appliances are so very big that if we didn't work as a team, we little Fixies could never get by. As the second period is about to begin, our full team comes to the ice! Huh? Introducing the engine of our class, my motor's roaring! And now the brains of our class, Digit! Okay, what's the score? Now here is the spirit of our class, Tula! Could I be our goalie? <laughs> and here she is, the face of our class, Verda! And oh, what a cute one. So you want to quit, Tom Thomas? I'm not afraid of you. I'm calculating the angle to use. Whoa! <laughs> Oops! <laughs> Pass it quick! Ugh. Quit sleeping! If you're gonna scream at me, I'm not going to play at all. Wow, that's some team you got there. Ah! Ah! Six nothing! Oh. It's a blowout! Now the intermission before the final period. We're missing something here. I can tell you what. You mean confidence? Uh, calculations? Elegance? I know speed. What's missing here's teamwork. Simka, you're right. It's one for all and all for one. Then here's what we're gonna do. We got it! Check, don't lose control. A line change on the fly. The puck is zooming towards the goal to score and break the tie. It's one for all and all for one. Great teamwork is a must. Let's go and show them how it's done. This game was made for us. Hockey's our game.
now. How did I get creamed like that? Because you're by yourself here, and we are a team. Team! team. The doorbell. Nolik! Nolik, what are you doing here? Just whistling a tune. Are you going to whistle that tune the whole time Tom Thomas is away? He just left with his parents for a week, and we've got guests coming, remember? What guests? I invited everybody. The class? Yes, class. <laughs> Are they sleeping in there what, huh? First they invite us, and now they don't want to let us in? I'll share the present with you, then. <laughs> uh, fire. Maybe you'll get it to work now. When they get here, they'll ring the bell. How come? Why don't they just do what they always do and climb through the keyhole? No way. It's not that simple, Nolik. Today they're our guests. Ah. The guests ring the bell, and the hosts let them in the house. <sighs> It doesn't ring. You think the doorbell's broken? I say we go fix it. Before we fix anything, we need to know what went wrong with it. First we'll fix it, and then we'll know what it was. Back in the olden days, people would hang a bell over their doors with a string, and guests would tug on it to make it ring. Today, doorbells are electric, and they make all sorts of different sounds. Some buzz, some ring, and some even chirp like birds. The sound comes from a box inside the house called a chime. To make the chime ring, you push a button that's located outside. The button works just like a light switch, but instead of turning on light, it turns on sound. Verda, will you join me? Whoop. I gotta think about this. Yeah. You think your guests are gonna come at all? Hmm? Simka! Tula? Hey! The doorbell doesn't work! It must be broken! That's odd. We heard it ring this morning. Nolik, let's go! First, we'll examine the contacts. Yep, good and tight. Okay, let's check the speaker. The speaker's fine. Maybe the electronics are the problem. And what if we disconnect these wires and switch them? What'll that do? We'll know soon enough. <laughs> you know what? Why don't we connect the wires straight together? Isn't that dangerous? We'll find out. Don't worry, nothing happened yet. Fire. He's the engine of our class. He's the fastest, the nimblest, and the bravest. Fire never sits still for a second, and he's always looking for adventure. New ideas just burn in his head. And that's why his name is Fire. But not all of his ideas are very good, so he's constantly getting bumps and bruises. He just can't help getting carried away. If he's burning with an idea, he can even forget about his classes at school. Grampus punishes him for that. But it doesn't seem to bother Fire, because some new plan will pop into his head the very next second. To be honest, Fire's my favorite out of all the boys in our class. It's sure never boring when he's around. Hey, you down there. I figured out why it's not working. So what's the reason? There's no electricity in the whole house. So that's why the bell isn't working. Uh, 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 uh. And what? We can't visit like real guests do until the electricity comes back? And when will it work again? Don't know. It could possibly take hours, guys. Uh, oh! It's working again! Ah! Enough ringing! Hey, Fire, quit fooling around! He's not fooling around! It's not me, see? Then who's ringing it? I don't know! Well, I know. The doorbell's ringing because Fire connected the wires together. True, but I'll fix that right now. Ha! <laughs> Your guests sure are noisy. Yeah. Thank goodness the humans aren't home right now. 
Hello! Hello there, dear guests! Let yourself into our home through the keyhole. So, should we go in? Go where? Go inside. Nah, that's not how guests act. So what do we do? Real guests always ring the bell. Okay, hold me tight. <laughs> the vent. Tom Thomas. Tom Thomas. Okay. Simka, Tula, check it out. It's pretty, isn't it? Oh, splendid. It's nothing but a trinket. It's completely useless. Useless? Look how well it matches my hair clip. Useful things are the kinds of things you truly need. For instance, like this rope ladder I've got. It's splendid. And where do you plan on climbing with this thing? Now this mirror here is both useful and pretty. Oh, how splendid. Tula, you say everything is splendid. Well, here's something super splendid that I bet you don't have. Oh, what is it? It's a mechanical super claw. It must be just perfect for scratching your back. <laughs> now look what I have. A photograph of Vector. And he signed it for me, too. Are you sure that's Vector? You've got a photo of the bravest fixie on the face of the entire planet? Yeah, and the most beautiful. Is it him for sure? No way! Let me take a look. Uh-uh. You'll smudge it. You've been fooled. No. Yes. Jealous? You are. Uh, ah! My photo! Oh, no! What was that? Uh, a draft. This is completely your fault. It's not my fault. It's your fault for bragging so much. Please, girls, stop fighting. Let's go find it. To lose a picture signed by the most famous fixie ever. It will be horrible when that picture of a fixie is found by humans. So where could it be? <gasps> I know how we can find it. Exactly. We'll blow a bubble and watch which way it goes as it floats away. We'll follow it and find your picture. Do you know why you can blow bubbles out of soapy water? At the surface of any liquid, there's an invisible film that is very thin but very strong. If you want to see it for yourself, fill up a glass with water all the way to the very top. Now you need to take a coin and carefully drop it into the water sideways. Then drop in another coin, and another, and another. You'll see that the water doesn't pour out but rises up and forms a hump. That's because the water at the top sticks together. Why? Because of a force called surface tension. Thanks to surface tension, water can form drops. It also helps us blow soap bubbles. Because when we add soap into the water, the film gets even stronger. But still not strong enough to stop the bubbles from bursting. <laughs> okay, it's ready. Now we need to blow. <gasps> Do it together. And... <gasps> It's gonna work. Look, it's flying! I did it! The vent! Of course! Why didn't I think of that before? Have you ever seen holes in the bathroom or kitchen that are covered with grids? Well, those are called vents. And behind the vent is a long pipe called an air duct. Unpleasant odors and musty air can be forced into the ducts and sent out of the house. And if you want that old, stale air to leave the house even faster, open a window and let in some of the fresh air from outside. Keep the air in your home as fresh as it can be. Hey, take a look! It got stuck over there! Get it before it flies away! How can we grab it? What do you mean? Don't you remember what I've got? Tiddy! Thank you, Simka. Why 
What would we ever have done without your mechanical claw? And your fantastic ladder. Then here you go. A present for you. Oh, thanks. It's just great. And I want to give you this. Oh, gee. It's just splendid. Simka, are you here? Huh. What you got there, Simka? A little mirror. It's pretty, don't you think? Oh, you girls. <laughs> You're all the same. <sighs> the level. Tom Thomas, I'm really sorry. The movie this weekend, I have to cancel. You do? I need to go to Africa for work. I leave tomorrow. Oh, cool. You think I could go with you? To Africa? Can you even find it on the map? Africa. Here we go. Mm-hmm. No, you're still too little. When you grow as tall as the top of Africa, then I'll take you with me. Here, there, ugh. Uh, uh. Tom Thomas, what you doing down there? I want to know if I'm as tall as the top of Africa or not. Well, do you know your height? Uh-uh. Okay, then let's measure you and mark how tall you are. You just need to hold the book, all right? <sighs> Simka, uh, how do we measure what's higher? The top of Africa or this line over here? Hmm. Hmm. It's a tough one. We need a piece of flexible, clear tubing. Oh, I can get it for you. I know where it is. And we'll build a simple tool to find out the answer. It's called a water level. Let's do an experiment. First, we'll pour water into two bottles, a little bit more into one, and a little less into the other. Now we'll connect them with a tube so that the water can flow between them. You see? The water flows and flows, and then it stops. It stops when there's the same amount of water inside of both bottles. And if we do this with a simple tube, it becomes a useful tool called a water level, in which the water on both sides is always the same height. I'm gonna watch the water level on this end, all right? Be careful how you lift it, or the water can get out. Nolik, what's going on? The water inside the tube is even with the line. There you go, Tom Thomas. Where the water is right now is how tall you are. And? Well, it looks like Tom Thomas isn't quite tall enough for Africa. What if we hold the tube a little higher? You can try if you want, but the water's gonna stay where it is. The water level on your side always stays the same as on the other side. Uh, I'm not getting that tall for a while yet. And what if we just lower the map a little? That wouldn't be honest. But it would be clever. There are a lot of great proverbs, but my favorite one is measure twice, cut once. And to measure things right, you need measuring tools. The simplest one is a ruler. With its help, we can find out the length of an object. A watch can tell us how much time has passed. A speedometer shows us how fast we are moving, like in a car or on a bike. An electric meter keeps track of how much electricity we are using. A decibel meter can tell us who is screaming or stomping louder. And a beam compass is used to accurately measure the size of a coin or a hole. We couldn't get by without wonderful tools like these. If we didn't measure the things we are building carefully, everything around us would just come loose and fall apart. Uh-oh. Dad! Dad! Look, Dad. Hmm, that's strange. Looks like you are a little taller. Does that mean you'll take me with you? Yeah. Are you ready? Yay! Ugh. 
But everyone who goes to Africa has to get vaccinated. You're okay with that, aren't you? I need vaccinations to go. Are you sure? Yeah, there's one against malaria, tsetse fly, crocodile bites. Altogether, there are ten shots. Ten shots? Yeah, ten. Oh. Dad, you know, I was joking. After you left the room, I moved the map down. Okay, I see. And I was joking about all those shots you need. What? You mean you don't need to get shots? You gotta. Just not ten. So how many? Nine of them. There's no vaccination anywhere to stop a crocodile from biting you. <laughs> the disguise. Mm -hmm. Ugh, good. Tom Thomas, why do you need a second aquarium? <laughs> Especially without any fish. First of all, it's a terrarium. And it's not for fish, it's for lizards and snakes. Ooh. My friend Katya asked me to take care of him while she's away. That's why I brought him here. Take care of who? There's no one in there. Ah! What is that? <laughs> it's a chameleon, Nolik. I think he's awesome. It's a bad idea to take him out. He might run away. Don't you worry. I got him. What a monster. But how come I couldn't see him before? It's because a chameleon knows how to disguise himself by changing the color of his whole body. <laughs> Have you ever seen a military uniform? They have special patterns and colors that help soldiers hide. That's called camouflage, and people learned it from animals. For instance, a caterpillar can look like a twig, and a seahorse can look like a piece of coral. An ordinary gray rabbit becomes white in the winter, so a wolf will have trouble finding it in the snow. But the champion of camouflage is the chameleon. This master of disguise can change its color in just a matter of seconds. Hey, Tom Thomas, where'd your chameleon go? Oh, it disappeared. It didn't disappear, it camouflaged. He won't hide for long. Let's find him. <laughs> Chusaka, have you seen the chameleon? Where is he? See him? No, he's not gonna let us catch him. We're gonna have to, to trick him into coming to us. Uh-huh. We can set a trap with something that he likes. What do they like, I wonder? What else? Their food. And what do chameleons eat? Well, like flies or caterpillars, roaches. Where's the fly going to come from? Well, what if... What? Oh, Simka, just you wait. I'm going to get you. Hey, we've got to help Katya. You don't see the caterpillar complaining. Quiet. Nolik, you start buzzing. Buzzing? Yeah, like a fly. Yeah, and flap your wings, too. Simka, how long do I gotta keep doing this? Until the chameleon shows himself. Just keep buzzing. Tom Thomas, there he is. Grab him. Uh, uh, uh. Camouflage all the time. They use nets that look like bushes, paint their tanks in colors that make them blend into their surroundings, and even fly in special planes that can't be seen by radar. They do everything they can to disguise their location. But it's not just the army that uses disguises. 
Photographers camouflage themselves to take pictures of wild animals. People use makeup to camouflage their blemishes. And artists, they disguise old walls with bright, happy pictures. And people just love to put on masquerade parties where they disguise themselves in costumes and masks. And of course, Fixies have their own great disguise. Remember? Well, what is it? Now he won't run away. So, Mr. Master of Disguise, what are you gonna say now? If only I could disguise myself that well. Nolan, what are you talking about? You know how to disguise yourself a hundred times better than him. Ah, oh, you're right. Hey, chameleon, look and learn. Here's a real disguise. Nolix Q. Whoop! <laughs> Tom Thomas, you'll be late for school if you don't stop. School? <laughs> don't you worry. <laughs> What's he breaking this time? This time, nothing. He's solving a Rubik's Cube, Nolik. Whose cube is it? The Rubik's Cube is the most popular puzzle game in the whole world. It was invented by Professor Rubik from Hungary. A cube has six sides on it. And on a Rubik's Cube, each of these sides has nine squares that are all the same color. You start by mixing up the colors. To solve a Rubik's Cube, you have to turn the pieces, and you keep turning and turning them until each side is one solid color again. For instance, red or yellow or light blue. Ha! That's nothing. Hey, Tom Thomas, how long have you been messing around with this cube already? It's been three whole days of turning. Three whole days? We could solve that puzzle in five minutes, now couldn't we, Simka? Oh, really? Then go right ahead. I'm off to school. Well, you ready to show Tom Thomas who's boss? <laughs> Just count me out. Hey, I thought you said Rubik's Cubes are easy to solve. I never said anything like that. This problem is all yours, Mr. Bragger. All right, I'll figure it out myself. Ugh. 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 Hey, Nolik, looks like you've got a problem. Oh, hi, Fire. Ugh. No, I'm good. Just solving this Rubik's Cube. Yeah? Can I do it with you? What, you can do it? Of course I can. How hard can it be? You'll see for yourself. Try getting all the red squares on one side. Piece of cake. Now hold it tight. Great, I'm with you. Ugh. Whoa! Like that? Class. Uh, and what about this side? What? This side's gotta be all blue. Okay, let's go fix it. There, like you wanted. Now what happened to the red side? Huh? Simka was telling me that on each side there has to be one color. Oh, like Sim could be able to do this? Simka can do it all. Well, if Simka can, then I can too. Oh! Fire! You busted the cube! I didn't bust it, I took it apart. Now let's put it together. And not just any way, but the right way. Puzzles are toys, games, or problems that force you to use your mind in a clever and creative way. Take a labyrinth, for example. In a labyrinth, the challenge is to find the one way to get through a series of tangled corridors. Another fun puzzle is a jigsaw puzzle. Here, you need to put together a picture out of many little pieces. For this, you need to not only pay attention, but be patient. And there are all sorts of puzzles for the computer. One popular
regular computer puzzle is Tetris. In Tetris, different shapes fall down the screen, and you have to think quickly to get them to line up into rows. And solving puzzles isn't only a great activity for people, it's good for fixies, too. That's right, puzzles are like exercises for our brain. There, all done. No, Lick, you better hurry, cause Tom Thomas is on his way home. Hi there, Simka. Just take a look at this, we did it. I can't believe it. How? Oh, it was a piece of cake. Simka, no, Lick, I'm back. Well, I'm out of here. Ciao. Woohee! Wow, you really solved it. It was no, Lick. No, Lick, you are cool, so how? You see, First, you break it apart into all of the pieces, and then you put it all back huh? together. No! That's cheating. You gotta turn the cube, not take it apart. Now I'll solve this cube, honestly. I don't think you can. Why are you so sure? I glued it together. Uh, how come? So you'll stop straining your brain with it. Now the cube will always be the right way. But if it doesn't turn, it's not a Rubik's Cube. Well, yeah. Now... It's a Nolix cube, right? The Pack-A-Mat. Uh, Simka, can I have the Pack-A-Mat? I'd like to practice with it a little before the exam. Take it! <gasps> hmm? You're really good with that thing. Good. I couldn't be any worse with it. I wanted a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Actually, you were pretty close there. He did manage to get the hose, at least. <laughs> this is not at all funny. In order to get a tool out of a Pac-Man, a fixie must not only press the button on his chest, but he must also clearly picture exactly the tool he needs. By the time they are adults, this is easy for fixies to do. But while they're children, they must study hard to master this important skill. As fixies learn about new tools, they take exams to prove they know how they work. And if they pass an exam, the new tool is added to their pack of mats. And there's no end to what you can find inside. Screwdrivers, hammers, ladders, vacuums, and even soldering irons. But many of the tools that fixies use look quite different from the ones that humans have. And the reason for this is very simple. It's because fixies have to fix appliances that are much bigger than they are. Uh, I just wish I knew which tool was going to be on that exam. I got it! You just stay right here. Grandpus! What? Um, on the exam, which tool are you going to ask about? It's a secret. Uh, it's too bad. But I'm sure you can keep a secret, right? Of course. Then I'll tell you. Today's exam is on pliers, you see? You won't tell anyone, will you? Not a chance. Uh, I'll never pass it. You will. He's going to ask about pliers. Huh? How could you know that? It's a secret. <laughs> OK, Digit. See if you can get the pliers out of there. A pair of pliers is a great tool indeed. To grab and turn things, it's the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use them, or your fingers, you could bruise them. Pliers are a great tool indeed. Just be careful how you use them, or your fingers, you could bruise them. Pliers are a great tool indeed. Good going. You got it. Thanks a lot, Nolik. It's not really me you should be thanking. Thanks a lot. For what? The secret. What secret? About the pliers. Oh, that. You know, I picked a new topic. Um, I decided that a hammer will be the tool. A hammer? Only it's a secret. I remember. <laughs> the topic I changed. It's a hammer. You sure about that? Totally. All right. I'll try to do it. A hammer is a great tool in
Cooper. I'm sure you're gonna pass. That's only if he asks me about a hammer. I'll be right back. <gasps> Grandpoos, it's a hammer for sure? Nah. A hammer would be way too easy for those kids. So now it is a drill. A drill? But only... It's a secret! <laughs> now I know. There's no doubt about it at all. It's a drill! <sighs> A drill is such a great tool indeed. To drill a hole, it is the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use it, or your finger, you could lose it. A drill is such a great tool indeed. And if it's not a drill, right. Hammers, wrenches, drills, screwdrivers, vices, mallets, saws, and pliers. All of these are super duper great tools, yes indeed. That's all. That's enough of this. I'll just go and take the exam. Yeah. Digit, come on in. Um, Professor, well, what do you want to ask me on today's exam? Nothing. You already passed. What? You mean you're not going to ask me anything at all? No need. You're excellent at getting tools out of a pack -a mat But how could you know that? That's a secret. And we fixies sure know how to keep secrets. 